Hello, and welcome to the Clinical Liver Disease video series. CLD is an official digital learning publication of the ASLD. I'm Dr. Rita German. I'm a transplant hepatologist at the University of Wisconsin in Madison and a guest associate editor with CLD. I'm here with Dr. Anahita Rabi, a transplant hepatology fellow at Yale University and the author of A Brief Overview of Immunosuppression and Their Side Effects After Liver Transplantation. Um, Anahita, thank you so much for joining us. Based on your article, can you first tell us the typical immunosuppression regimens used post-liver transplant? Um, hi, everyone. Yes, absolutely. So, you know, it can vary by center. So there are center-specific practices and also different patient factors can play a role in what immunosuppression regimen is chosen for a patient post-liver transplant. But a typical one that you're probably most likely to see is pulse steroids immediately post-transplant. And usually by three months, the steroids are weaned uh, unless there is a specific reason such as rejection or history of autoimmune hepatitis. And uh, basically the mainstay of the uh, immunosuppression regimen in many, many cases is calcineurin inhibitors such as tacrolimus. And they, these are usually started kind of immediately post-transplant and then continued on. During the first year post-transplant, sometimes uh, we see patients on um, a regimen of, for example, calcineurin inhibitor plus mycophenolic acid, um, the goal being to uh, kind of be able to uh, target lower trough levels on calcineurin inhibitors and minimize uh, nephrotoxicity. And after one year, you'll see majority of patients can actually transition to monotherapy and just be on a calcineurin inhibitor. Um, so again, that's just an example. Uh, there are many factors that can play a role in what we choose uh, after transplant for a patient. Thank you for that. And how might this regimen change in patients with comorbid kidney disease? Or what about patients with a history of liver cancer? Um, so uh, in the example of uh, comorbid kidney disease, um, there are um, renal sparing regimens that can be used. So immediately uh, post-liver transplant, uh, we want to be able to delay initiation of calcineurin inhibitors, which have the major nephrotoxicity. So many centers use uh, basiliximab, uh, and, uh, which will um, let them be able to start the uh, calcineurin inhibitors a little bit later after the transplant. And uh, they also use addition of mycophenolic acid early on so that uh, lower trough levels can be targeted for the calcineurin inhibitors. Um, in terms of the um, uh, history of cancer, uh, one of the options um, for mainstay of the um, immunosuppression in these patients can be mTOR inhibitors. Uh, they are usually not used immediately post-transplant as they can impair wound healing. And also there is some slight concern about causing hepatic artery thrombosis post-transplant, especially immediately post. Um, however, um, you know, after three to six months, they can be considered in patients with history of liver cancer. There are some studies suggesting that in patients who had hepatocellular carcinoma within Milan criteria, um, these medications can, um, you know, improve overall recurrence-free survival. Wonderful. Uh, and finally, can you tell us about the side effects of most, uh, some of the most common agents, like particularly calcineurin inhibitors and mycophenolic acid? Uh, absolutely. So for calcineurin inhibitor, I think I've already mentioned a few times, the major concern is nephrotoxicity, and it can be acute kidney injury or chronic kidney injury. The acute is usually in the setting of afferent arterial vasoconstriction and is uh, mostly reversible. However, the chronic nephrotoxicity is in the setting of interstitial fibrosis and uh, is usually irreversible and can actually, in many patients, lead to end-stage renal disease. Um, so that's one of the major concerns. Uh, the other major side effect or concern with calcineurin inhibitors is the combination of all metabolic syndrome uh, problems that we can see. So new onset diabetes, hypertension, dyslipidemia, obesity, um, so those are kind of um, uh, uh, metabolic syndrome features that can be seen in the setting of calcineurin inhibitor use. 
Uh, there's also concern for neurotoxicity, which can be as benign as tremors to seizures or press. So um, it can uh, present in wide uh, range of uh, phenotypes. In terms of the mycophenolic acid, um, one of the most common ones is uh, GI side effects, such as nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea, and uh, also causing bone marrow suppression and cytopenias. Those are the um, main ones that we usually see with these medications. Wonderful. Well, Anahita, this was extremely interesting. Thank you again for joining us for another installment in the Clinical Liver Disease video series. And thank you to our viewers for joining us on behalf of all of us at CLD team. I hope you found this brief discussion on overall overview of immunosuppression and side effects in liver tra transplantation useful. Um, for more information about this topic, please visit us at www.cldlearning.com. And thank you again for watching and thank you, Anahita. Thank you.